high in the mountains of central Mexico. Sixteen people have learned the art of rug hooking. You will find them working at kitchen tables or on patios using what little free time they have hooking rugs. Their subject matter is the life around them. So how did rug hooking, a craft with roots from the United States and Canada, come to Mexico? It all began in San Miguel de Allende with a conversation among friends. In the mid-90s, George Ann Johnson and others from the expat community were brainstorming on what they could do to improve the lives of women in rural Mexico. From this conversation, the nonprofit organization Mujeres in Cambio was created. The primary purpose was raising funds to provide scholarships for girls, since school costs money in Mexico. The other part of the conversation concerned finding a product that women could make and sell. The idea of rug hooking was considered, since the women already had skills in crochet and embroidery. San Miguel has a large population of artists. One of them, Jerry Gill, agreed to teach this craft to interested women. This was followed by three winters of teaching by a master rug hooker, Mary Maudsley. And so the project was launched. I became involved as a photographer when I visited the village in 2000 to provide photographs of the women for the website I was constructing for Mujeres and Cambio. Through the help of Susan White, we cooked up the idea of bringing the rugs to Austin, Texas to sell. Since then, each fall, I have brought back a collection of rugs to sell at various venues, with all profits going to the women. However, it was in 2003 when a freelance writer, Lori Myers, interviewed me and wrote a four-page article in Rug Hooking Magazine that important connections began to be made. First, there were sales of rugs and donations of wool and supplies. Then came people that wanted to help, the most important being Barbara Hansen. She placed the women's rug designs on her website, rugartsupply.com, giving the women 50% of the profit. She also organized with Carl Anala the first real museum showing of the rugs at the Glenn Viola Walters Cultural Arts Center in Hillsboro, Oregon in November 2007. She also organized the first rug hooking camp in San Miguel, which will be held in August of 2008. So who are these women and what is life like in rural Mexico? They are from the village of Agustin Gonzalez, located 15 miles south of San Miguel de Allende which is north of Mexico City at 6,500 feet in the Bajio state of Guanajuato. Agustin Gonzalez is a fairly typical rural Mexican farming village of about 100 families, a thousand people. However, this changes with the seasons as many of the men go to El Norte to work for part of the year. Life in the village centers around farming. Corn and beans, the staple of Mexico, are the major crops. Every June, the ground is tilled by oxen, horses or mules, and the seeds are planted by hand. The rains in this semi-arid region are fickle. Drought years send more and more men to El Norte to make money to buy corn for that year. In September begins the harvest. If you visit during the harvest season, you will be treated to freshly picked corn cooked over an open fire. The vegetable of the region is the nopal cactus. Spines are removed and they are lightly cooked with onions, chilies, cilantro, and served with corn, tortillas, rice and beans, the staple diet. Meat is only for special occasions. Boney is 52 and the organizer of the group. 
She has only a fourth grade education, but manages to organize all the sales. She lives with her mother, Maria, a widow of 25 years, her sister and her brother. All are single and farming is their major livelihood. Here we see them in their traditional kitchen, three walls and a roof and a fire pit. Maria forming tortillas and her hat taken off after a day working in the fields. A view inside their humble home. Sarah Tovar, 24, and her two children. Boney is Sarah's aunt, but has served as grandmother to Sarah's children since Sarah's mother died in 2003 of jaw cancer. Outside of Sarah's house, she has a fancy kitchen with tile and paint. Her husband has worked as an illegal in the United States for the past six years from March to January. He returns each year to build on the house. And during the year, he regularly sends money to support his family. The third birthday is a big affair in Mexico. Children are dressed in special clothes and presented in front of the priest who asked them questions about their lives. Little Fernando answered eloquently for a three-year-old. A party follows. Norberto Ramirez is 69. He is primarily a farmer. I call him the Zorba of Mexico. He has a big and fun personality. He was taught rug hooking by his wife, Belen, who died in December of 2006. He serves as a father figure to his grandchildren as their father works in the United States. He has no education, but has taught himself to read. Here we see him teaching his grandchildren how to dance. And Selma Ramirez is 44. She is Norberto's daughter-in-law. She has taught her daughter-in-law, Remedios, how to hook rugs. Her husband, Norberto's oldest son, is a stone carver. He is working here with Ruperto, Boni's brother. We see a fountain laid out in the courtyard of his house. San Miguel is under a building boom, so many of the men of the village make extra money by working in construction. They have six children, with the two oldest working in the United States. Isabel Casares is 37 and has four children. She is married to Boney's brother, who is a master stonemason, as you can see here from this photograph. He has a green card and has had it since the 80s, but only goes back occasionally to work in the United States. He has made the money necessary to create this lovely house and prefers to live in his village with his family. Silvia Hernandez is 40 and has six children. Here we see her in her interior kitchen and in her exterior kitchen with her cabal. The interiors of country houses are used mostly as bedrooms, closets, and a place to watch telenovelas. Most activities are done outside in the mild climate. In a true Mexican tradition, you cannot visit a house without having food offered, preferably a meal. Sylvia had to offer me something, so she ran into her house to get these lovely guavas, a special fruit. And so we leave Augustine Gonzalez on a typical street. I dedicate this slideshow to Belen, Norberto's wife, that died in December of 2006. We will miss her. I hope this story of the rug hookers of Agustin Gonzalez has given you a taste of life in rural Mexico. And as you see Mexicans working in the United States, consider that most of them came from places like this. And the vast majority are only in the United States temporarily to make money. And they want to return to their families and their homeland.